Oh yeah. Let's go. Podcast flow, you already know. Sneakers in the NBA, the NFL for show. Me and Langston got it locked. Got the podcast, now we coming on through, we boxing, now we ever last. A day in our kicks, a day in our kicks, a day in our kicks. You gon' have to listen to it. A day in our kicks, a day in our kicks, a day in our kicks. You gon' have to listen to it. Sneakers on lock, NBA on lock, got that NFL on lock. We got that music on lock, we never ever gon' stop. He up in the NBA, I be reporting, I do what I say Everybody know how we get it, eh? Hold up, killing the flow, getting the flow Getting the money, you already know We gonna be coming on through for the city We trying to do our thing, you just like Diddy You, what's up, bro? What's going on, bro? Everything been good? Everything's good, everything's good, man It's been long overdue, man I know, I know, hey We've been, we've been both grinding keeping, keeping at it, so hey, it's time, time to get back on track yeah, definitely, definitely. That's what holiday season will do to you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, man. How how was your Thanksgiving? It was great. It was great. Got a chance to just hang out with the family. Uh, we had a day off from practice, so uh, just uh, take a little break, get a little rest, get a little re- rejuvenation, and then get back on track. How about you? How about you? Everything was good, man. You know, obviously, I would have wanted to be home with uh, my mom and my sister, but other than that, you know, I went to um, one of my mentor's houses out here. Um, he works for the AP, so um, I went over to his family's house. We watched some football, had some ham, and just kicked it. You know what I'm saying? Played some darts, so it was all good, man. No complaints, man. That's real good, man. Real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already know, man. We we got to get back to these topics, man. They've been wanting to know what we, we've been up to and want to know what we think about what's going on. So uh, You know what time it is. It's time for the starting five. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. What you got for me? I'm gonna let you start off. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you start off. What, okay. what, what you got for me? Okay, so I'm I'm a, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I know we we missed a couple weeks here for for all the fans, but uh, I, I really want to get into the Le'Veon Bell contract situation. Uh, okay. is, is this like is this a good thing for the NFL or a bad thing? Uh, I mean, I know uh, Pittsburgh been really playing well. James Conner been really uh, doing his thing, but. Is this a good thing or a bad thing, in your opinion? Just give me your opinion, and I'll, I'll give you my little insight. Uh, overall, I think I think it's bad because I feel like the Steelers should pay him. Um, you know, he's he's a guy that's consistently giving them everything that they've asked. You know what I'm saying? Um, whether you put him, line him up at the wideout, have him in the back. You know what I'm saying? Eye formation. Every he knows all the formations. He can run all the routes. You put him in that slot, nobody's stopping him. So I, I think they kind of messed up on this one, especially, you know, me being a Patriots fan, like Le'Veon Bell gives us a headache every year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So um, I, I really think that they missed out on a on a, on a a gym that they had. I know that they were a little skeptical about, about his um, on and off the court actions. You know what I'm saying? Remember previously yeah. him and LeGarrette Blount, they had that um, situation off the field. And everything, so you know, maybe they felt a little shaky about giving giving him that money, and they wanted him to earn that trust. Maybe I don't know, but at the end of the day, you got a talent like that, once in a lifetime talent. You got to pay the man, especially um, with what happened to um, Earl Thomas. You know, Earl Thomas was like, "Look, I want to be paid by the Seattle Seahawks." He's like, "I want to get paid," and then all of a sudden. Um, you know, he was like, you know what, I'll just, I'll, I'll suck it up again for you guys. You know, I'm, I'm committed to the team. And then, bam, he got injured and he was out for the season. Right. And remember, remember, he was sticking the middle finger at them when he was, <laughs> when he was leaving. So, yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, with the Le'Veon Bell situation, that's why he, 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 he sat out. He wanted to get paid. He wanted the guaranteed money so that he could be good and his family could be good. And then, you know, and he could be taken care of. So, that's my opinion. I, I think they should have paid him. Um, they're probably going to lose him to a team like the Jets or like the Texans or maybe even the Dolphins or something like that in the off season. But, um, you know, I, I think they really should have paid him because he would have came in big time 
right now because with James Conner, you can't you can't line him up in the in in and put him on the outside as a wide receiver. You know what I'm saying? People know what they're gonna get when James Conner's in the backfield, and that's right. that's not a good feeling. You need to be able to have somebody that's multi, you know, multi multi talented in that backfield that can yep. catch and run at the same time. And uh, I, I feel like they lost out. What you what you think? No, nah, uh, I feel the same way about you that, you that you're saying. But at the same time, I, I really think this is actually a good thing for the NFL. I know that uh, it kind of sucks for Le'Veon, but um, it's really going to help out the players, I think, in the long run because more players should be, I, in my opinion, it should be the power to the players. It should be them holding out saying, hey, look, I'm not, I'm not getting paid what I want or I'm a franchise player and, and I feel like I should be – uh, getting my my benefits. I, I shouldn't be out here risking my life, and y'all are still paying me on on a half minimum contract. You know, like, I, like it's not a maximum contract that he he should be getting paid. I mean, he he didn't put his life on the line for yeah. the last what? How many years has he been in uh, Pittsburgh? The last six years. He's Five. been he's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's been in Pittsburgh as long as I can I can remember. And, uh, I mean, he literally hasn't done anything wrong. Nothing off the field, nothing on the field. He's been he's been a great like contributor for the for their organization. And definitely, definitely. I, I, I think that's that's big for them, like for the NFL, because it's gonna make if if you start seeing more and more guys hold out, you're gonna see a lot of different like owners and a lot of different teams saying, "Well, I mean, we we hold we're, we're not paying our guys, and they keep constantly getting hurt, just like Earl Thomas got hurt." Yeah. And now, I mean, now his career could be over with, you know. So, um, I think this is going to help the players. I hope, hopefully, down the road, and you can really see a lot of benefit from this. Um, and I mean, hopefully, Le'Veon will be back in the league next year. But uh, hey, I, I just hope this this benefits them, and like in the overall standpoint of the NFL, instead of just like this small thing comparing it to him. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I mean, at the end of the day, I think you know. I think the NFL is a player's league now, is getting there. Yeah. The NBA is light years ahead of them. But, right. um, you know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, I think um, the Le'Veon Bell situation, you know, it was bad for the for, for NFL because, you know, as a fan, we're missing another star yeah. that we would have in the league. But at the same time, you know, it's one of those situations where you want the player to be taken care of as well and want him to have that stability. So, I'm not I'm – not, you know, I'm not mad at him at all. So I, I'm, I think the NFL. You know, at the end of the day, the NFL is putting out the best talent. We still got Todd Gurley and these other guys, and, and that's something else that messed, you know, messed up the Le'Veon Bell situation. He saw Todd, Todd Gurley get that guaranteed money, so he's like, "Where's mine?" Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm up there with with the top backs. Hey, I should be just like them. Should be getting exactly. paid. My organization should be taking care of me, but. Yeah. I mean, like like I said, the owners sometimes in different organizations just don't want to do that. They don't want to take care of their players, and that's why they're, they're at the point they are right now. It's like if they go out and lose out in the first round, everybody's going to be upset that Le'Veon didn't play. Exactly, exactly. But, but it's like it's not. It doesn't have nothing to do with Le'Veon. It's like, hey, Pittsburgh got to be better, you know? That's that's on the organization, man. So, so All right, what, what you yep. got? What you got? What's your first topic? Uh, For me, man, I got, uh, you know – Last the last episode we had, we talked about Jamal Murray. Right. You know when he when he scored, he tried to um, score fifty one on the Celtics, and Kyrie got upset. And we talked about the hidden rules, and you know within basketball. So my thing is, what was the difference between Murray Murray going trying to go for fifty and didn't get it, and then Lance Stevenson telling LeBron, "Hey, I bet you can't get 50, and LeBron going for the last shot. So what? Talk to me about the different variations of those moments and, um, and you know, is it okay because LeBron did it or is that hidden rule still, that respect factor is still there because they had the game in hand when LeBron did it as well. Yeah, I, I think the, the hidden rule is still there no matter what who shoots it. It doesn't matter if uh, Jamal shoots it. It doesn't matter if Kyrie shoots it. It doesn't matter if LeBron shoots it. I think that uh, at that point in the game, it just happened to play out where, in Jamal's situation, it was the it was the end of the game. Like there was no more shot clock, like there was nothing. There was nothing left. Like it was gonna be the game over regardless. But then in LeBron's situation, they actually had I think it was like thirty or forty seconds left. So there was another possession that was gonna come either way. So so 
And I mean, just I'll just say just in league rules and just like player rules. Um, I know the game was in hand, but it's like some guys are like, "Hey, look, I'd rather not take a uh, a turnover on my on my like stats that night, and rather just shoot the ball and just say, hey, if I miss a shot, cool. If I make it, cool.'" And I think yeah. that's why I don't think anybody had a problem with it because it it was in the flow of the game. It wasn't like, "All right, I got to force this to to make I mean, fifty one. But you gotta look at it like this: they they beat them, they beat the Heat. It was one thirteen to ninety seven. You know what I'm saying? It's like, did you really need to go? You know what I'm saying? But but, but LeBron didn't check back in, did he? Or did he? He didn't. No, he he was um still in the game or whatever at that point. So you know what I'm saying? He just he chucked it up. You know what I'm saying? He chucked it up. I'm guaranteeing it was yeah. It was at least I think there was like fifteen, sixteen seconds left in the game. And he he shot that. But it was a shot clock coming up, though, right? It could have been. It could have been. But, you know, usually usually people, you know, they dribble it out, get that 24 set. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and that's why I, I was trying to figure it out because, you know, Jamal Murray, he got he got bashed. And he's yeah. like, Look, I'm trying to get my, my career high out here. But Kyrie tossed his ball. Yeah. So it's like, as an opponent, when you see LeBron, when you see LeBron go for that, you know what I'm saying? Shouldn't you feel the shouldn't you feel the same way? I would feel the same way. Like, yo, you know, yeah, the, the game's I, already we, we already beat. You got us by almost 20. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like, you know, let let's just end it. You know what's up. Yeah, but it's not, that the person that was telling them to shoot it already did that crime, Lance Stevenson. Right, 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 <laughs> so, right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so Lance is like, I don't care if the time's running out or not, I'm gonna put it up. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, maybe it's uh, like thinking about it now. I'm like trying to replay the whole scenario. It might, it might be a who's who. That might be the situation that I'm, I'm looking at. Okay, uh, like it's a Jamal Murray compared to LeBron. James. Exactly, and I feel like they're not gonna glorify it as much because it's LeBron. Yeah. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, they're not, they're not gonna blow it up like, like Jamal, like, like Kyrie's not gonna blow it up on Jamal. Because he's not he's not LeBron James, so I w- I would want to see if LeBron did something like that when he's playing against like another big superstar. Yeah. How would the reaction be? We haven't seen it where it's been two all stars or two superstars, uh, and it happens to either one of them during the game. You know, that's true. Yeah. Oh. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, you know, you could be right. It, it could be the the extra hidden rule in there. You know. Yeah, the LeBron the LeBron factor. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now nah, I just wanted to get your opinion on it because for me, I feel like it was basically the same thing as Jamal Murray, and it's like at the end of the day, it's like you know we still got to make sure that we're respecting the rules and those those hidden rules, the regular rules. You know what I'm saying? Because if I know if I'm in that that Heat uniform and, and and um you know he takes that shot, I'm like, come on, really? Like we already know you the greatest. You know, right. you, we know you the best right now in the world. Type. You know what I'm saying? Like you you. You've had already multiple fifty point games. It's not like you're trying to prove something. Like games already in the bag, you know. Let's 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 dead this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're right. So it is what it is. I just wanted to get your opinion on that, you know, because I felt like you know there was a Jamal Murray versus LeBron. You feel me? Like yeah. one's gonna get bashed, the other one's <laughs> the other one is just gonna get swept under the rug. Right, 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 right. Yep. No, yeah. No, I, I think that's what it comes down to. Is 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 that is is that rather than the hidden rule? You know. I got you. All right, what's your, what 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 you got for me for your next topic? Okay, next one. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get right to it. I know everybody is kind of like buzzing right now with the whole Dwight Howard situation. And <laughs> I, I want to get your opinion. I mean, uh, I think it's been in every locker room that that's out there right now. I don't know like what's going on. Maybe the media talks about it too. Um, Give me, give me your opinion about it. Like, what, what have you, you heard about it, or what have you, you read into it? And man, um, do you think this messes up Dwight Howard's career? Like, what, what do you think? It's so crazy though, because like I don't know where the, the, like the origin of the, the whole story is. I don't know where the beginning is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I only see what I see on NBA Twitter and stuff like that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it definitely hurts his. It hurts his image. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This guy, he got kids. You know what I'm saying? He's he's already gone through enough, I feel like, whether it be career-wise or whether it be off the court as well. You know what I'm saying? So 
this is something that's definitely going to this is going to tarnish his career as far as within his peers, you know what I'm saying? Within you guys, you know what I'm saying? In the NBA community, yeah. you know, the players are definitely going to look at him differently, you know, oh. as you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I feel like this whole situation is not what he needed. It's, it's bad enough. People already said that they felt like, you know, he wasn't being a, a, a true teammate that they could depend on and, and, and they felt like he was soft and this, that, and the third. Like, you hear so many things about Dwight Howard, but at the end of the day, it's like we always give him the benefit of the doubt and we listen to it like, you know what? Uh, you know, we got to listen to him, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day because he'll always come back and be like, you know what? This is on me. I'm a true team player. I'm this, I'm that. I'm going to rebuild my body. I'm going to redo this. He's always had injuries and stuff like that. And then it's like he's finally getting it going. When he was in Charlotte, he started getting it going. Yep. And then he went to Washington. We was like, okay, this is really going to be it. You know, what they, I'm thinking, all right, he got his career back on track. You know, he's, right. he, he's getting it back to where, where he used to be that dominant, you know, give you at least, you know, maybe 10 plus and maybe 10 rebounds. At least at this, at this point in his career, I think that would be good. 10 and 10, give me a double-double every night. I'm good. Yep. And then – the whole the whole situation with the Wizards locker room and everybody saying stuff about John Wall and 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 and, and I guess like they had like a teammate an, an anonymous teammate came out and said that it's John Wall's team and Scott Brooks is is scared and this and the third so all that stuff happening with the Wizards in their locker room and then with this Dwight Howard situation I'm like this is not adding this is not helping the situation the situation so, at all you know what I'm saying so so with this whole thing um. It's just tough, man, because now you're you're talking about, you know, sexuality, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that's been hidden and, and swept under the rug as well in the NBA. Because remember when um when um when one of the Collins brothers came out and was like, hey, I'm gay, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They made, the NBA made a big deal, made a big deal to make sure that they showed, you know what, we support him, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if that whole support system is going to be there with Dwight Howard because of everything that he's been through in his career and, and the way that his peers look at him. So yeah. it's it's really tough, man. It's really tough because if this is true with, with all the allegations that have come out and stuff like that, I think it's, it's going to be tough for him to recover because he has to recover as a man, but at the same time he has to recover as a father. You know, right. he got kids and he got he got people and he got family members that look up to him and he got kids that look up to him. There's a couple of people that I know that still say, hey, Dwight Howard's my favorite player. So there's there's a lot of people that are looking up to him, and um, this this hurts his image. So that's just my take on it. You know, I don't know the whole story, and I don't know how it started. I'm pretty sure, you know, you know, you might know a little bit more than I do about the situation as far as being in the locker rooms and reading up on it and stuff like that. But um, I heard about it first and foremost um, the other night when I was waiting for Westbrook. Um, you know, to come back from shooting, we was in the locker room and one of the media members um, brought it up. And I was, it was, he was like, oh, just just um, look up Dwight Howard on Twitter. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's not looking good for him. And I was like, oh, OK. So then that's how I kind of I didn't get the full the full recap of what happened and how it started. But what's your take on it? And um, and, and, and let me know how you feel, you know, as a um, as a as a pair, as an NBA player, how you feel from your perspective. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely shocking to me because um, I I was I remember I was watching the LSU game at the time LSU versus Texas and M game the other day. Mm-hmm. And it, be, it was like what it had to be like twelve, like a little bit little bit past midnight. And then I just like happened to be on Twitter, like following the game and watching the game on TV at the same time. And then like my my like story kept changing. It was like Dwight, Dwight, Dwight. I'm like, what's going on? So. Actually went on a search bar, searched it, and like really like dug in deep to just try to see what's going on. Like, is this like allegations or is this true? You know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I never want to see anything like this pop up for a player and then like that nothing like that that's harmful yeah, to his career. Not. And um, I mean, it's it's a lot out there. It's it's a, it's a lot of different um instances where um it's kind of like he say she say, you know? Yeah. So um, I mean um. There hadn't been any uh, reports from him saying anything yet, so uh, the media is kind of like keeping him back to to let him get his thoughts together and really like think about like, all right, what am I going to say? How am I going to re- respond to this? Because definitely, this this it's a lot. This like like you said, this could be 
uh, a really a, a, a huge image breaker for his career because mm-hmm. um, I mean, hey, it's it's like you're only as good as what how your image is, and, and especially in, in any business uh, that you come in contact with. So yeah. um, uh, hopefully this doesn't um, affect his image or anything like that. But um, yeah, uh, for his family for sure. I know, like you said, he has a numerous amount of kids and. Uh, different people in his life that that means so much. So I, hopefully it doesn't it doesn't affect him that much. But uh, it, it's it's definitely talking in the locker rooms. Every, every locker room right now is talking about that. Because I remember two years ago when we had the whole D'Angelo Russell thing in the locker rooms. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a big thing, and like everybody was like kind of like joking about it. But at the same time, that was real because that is real. That that happens a lot. Like you know, a lot a lot of guys are just hanging out and they're just talking freely, and it's like. You don't want to be in the locker room, like kind of like holding your holding your breath and like thinking like, well, I can't tell uh, this guy that, you know, because yeah, like, hey, yeah. this, this should be this should be a y'all are brothers, y'all are brothers, right, right. This is a family, you know. what I mean, yeah. this, is, this is what we we do every day, single day, and we we basically are with our teammates more than we with our families at some points in in our, our, our career. So for real, yeah, it's 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 definitely gonna be tough to see and. Um, hear more as more and more com- continue to come out about this Dwight situation. Uh, it's it's going to be hard to hard to hear. And then uh, hopefully um, they, they figure it out. Yeah. As a as a NBA player, though, like in the locker room, you hear something like this. Like, what's your first thought process? You know what I'm saying? Like, because like you said, with the D'Angelo Russell situation, that's something that was serious and it was something that was talked about. So my thing is, if you hear something like this, like what's what's the first thing that comes to your mind as 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 brothers? You know what I'm saying? What's the first mind that you you like, man? Like I don't I don't know what I don't know if this is true. I don't know whatever. But how do you embrace that moment as an NBA player? You you really have to as an NBA player. I think you have to kind of take a step back and and really look at it from a standpoint of uh, number one is how how is this going to affect family like your your family like because mm-hmm. it's not it's not just you seeing this it's like everybody that's in your circle is seeing the same exactly same, you know. so that's that's number one number two uh the locker room uh, guys guys kind of like really like back like you're friendly with a lot of guys and like when stuff like this happens a lot of guys take a step back and re like rethink it like a lot of situation when you know you could be joking or you could be doing different things because you don't know how like I mean like say if this does come out and it's true okay that's great but at the same time you don't want to be in the locker room making jokes about hey this guy that guy or or whatever he's doing because mm-hmm. you never know what's going on behind somebody's closed door you know yeah that's true so so that's that's the biggest thing and I remember I remember when 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 that happened with Collins uh, I remember him saying that he had been dealing with it for a long time and yeah. um and a lot of guys made a lot of jokes and it just like it wasn't it wasn't like an inviting like uh, environment for him. Yeah. Not not saying that anybody knew that at the time, but like just like it wasn't inviting for anybody. It's like you don't want to mm-hmm. be in a locker room making jokes and, and somebody's like, hey, I'm dealing with this right now. And I, I mean, I just can't say it. So uh, it's, it's, it's definitely like a, a, a really sticky situation. And you don't you don't yeah. want to challenge anybody's like uh, background because that's that's not that's not your place or or. Or your uh your how you should talk about it, you know. Definitely. You know? Nah, I definitely agree with you on that one, man. So I'm I'm hoping that uh that Dwight definitely um you know can pick himself up from the situation and whether it's true or not, at the end of the day, he's still a human being and and we gotta look at it like you know, look at it like from from that perspective. You know, yes he's a celebrity because he's a basketball player and and he's a face, but at the same time, you know, you, you always want the best for somebody you know, through through thick and thin, you feel me? So, I just yep. hope he can uh, pick himself up and and hopefully he can pick his image up from from the situation. And I and I hope no hurt, no hurt, harm or danger comes to his family as well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah going from that, man. <laughs> going yeah. from that to, uh, my uh, my next topic was um, you know, what was your um? I know it's been a little while, but what was your thoughts on the um Jimmy Butler trade? Um. You know, when he went to Philly, like, what? where were you at when you heard the trade? When you heard the trade, um, you know, what did you automatically think about it? And um, how do you feel like Philly stacks against you guys in the East? 
Yeah, so when I first heard about the trade, we were actually coming off the court from um from practice and um I hadn't I didn't know anything going into practice and a couple guys that said, Hey man, um it just went down and I was like, What? What do you mean? He's like, Yeah, it just it just happened and I was like, Okay, well, that's that's actually a good trade for Philly because it really like uh it brings uh a like a another versatile wing that can really score the ball for, for Philly. Yeah. So, so it really benefits Philly uh, in the first place. That's number one. Number two, um, it, it it really, uh, I mean, if you look at the East right now, it was kind of like wide open because uh, you look at like Boston, they've kind of been struggling. They've been going in and out, like playing good games, playing bad games here and there. Philly was kind of up and down too, but they, they had been really playing well. But but Toronto was like the, the head honcho so far in the yeah. East. And so just, thus far in the season and um and to see like Philly like get pick up a piece like that so early in the season yeah um it, it, it's really gonna benefit them in, in the long run because I mean as you can see um the last couple of games he's hit what two game winners out of the last like three or four games that he's played so yeah uh yeah and nah, it, it brings another versatile player for them I mean yeah, I mean, it went from J.J. Redick being, like, the go-to guy in the second unit to now they have, like, J.J., uh, Jimmy, and they have Joel uh, in the starting mm-hmm. lineup. That really can – that's a one, two, three punch right there. So Definitely. Uh, that's, 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 a tough, that's a tough combination. I, I really can't wait for us to play them. I, I think we play them up, up and coming. So uh, it's going to be really exciting to see uh, how we match up with them and, um, and then – how how can we uh, adjust while we're on the fly to playing against them? Because the first first game we played against Philly, uh, Ben Simmons didn't play. The second game, Ben Simmons played, but um, Jimmy Butler wasn't there yet. So this time he'll be there and, and it'll be at full strength. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that. I was um I was leaving um Thunder shoot around when I heard about the trade. So um. And I was just like, oh, snap. Like, it caught me off guard because I seen that notification. I was like, oh. Yeah. So, um, you know, my first initial thought was, um, I was like, man, they, they loaded now. You yeah. Know? And now they got they got somebody who can – they got basically a 3 and D. They got somebody right. that, can, that can shoot the three, but you're getting a high-quality defender as well. And you're getting a dog. You're getting somebody that that takes it, takes it personal. He takes every matchup personal yep. you know, because he feels like – he came from the bottom, just like you. You know what I'm right. saying? He, he came. He came from the dirt, where he's like, you know, I had to. I gotta go out here and prove it, and make sure people understand that I'm here to stay. And um, he's somebody that takes every single every single challenge, and um, and he he wants to he wants to prove that he's the best with every single challenge that comes in front of him. So I definitely liked it. I thought, um, you know, I thought their bench was gonna hurt a little bit, you know, because. You lose the Sarich and, and um and then also you losing um you lose Covington, Covington. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah you lose Covington you know what I'm saying so you losing some shooting but at the same time you're bringing that dog mentality to to Philly and I think he's somebody that will gravitate towards that city because he's a blue collar guy but you add him with Joel and, and you add him with Simmons you know what I'm saying that's that's a nice little three right there so. The, yeah. the way they've been playing, they've been gelling with each other, and um, you know, and it's been flowing fluently. It's yep. not like anything's forced. You know, what I'm saying Jimmy's getting the ball in those tough situations, which I think should be happening because he's the most um, he's he has the most experience on that team. So I think overall the trade really helped him, and it's helped him defensively. You know what I'm saying? They 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 definitely showed some signs, and um, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens down down the down the line for the. For the East, you know, like you said, Toronto, they've been lights out. You know, I, nobody would have thought that that chemistry would have been that good with Kawhi over there, you know, especially with a new system. Everybody was like, oh, he's a system player yep. with, with San Antonio. But he came over to came over to Toronto and he's like, no, I'm a good player. I'm not a system player. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I've been doing this. So it, it's it's going to be good. The East is, the East is um, it's, it's getting tougher. You know what I'm saying? The East is tough now. Yeah, oh, they, you know, walk in the park like people people always say it is. Oh, LeBron's gone now; it's easy. That's right. not going to be the case this year. So, I, I like I said, I like Philly getting getting Butler. He brings he brings another dimension to that team that they didn't have. He brings that grit and grind. And um, overall, I think I think it was a um, 
I think it was a really good trade for them, and it's and it's showing that it has been so far. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna benefit them very well. And um, like I said, I'm excited to play against them and see see where they're at, see where we're yeah. at, see where they're at, and uh, really go from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what you what you got for me for your next topic? All right, next topic. All right, so uh, this is this is a question for you, uh, from the media standpoint of it. Okay. Uh, so, Trav, being in the media, do you think uh, having so many high scoring games and it is it good for the NBA, or like do you think that it's kind of like it's taking away the the defensive play? Like I know you just said, like three and D with with uh, yeah. with Jimmy Butler. Like, is that benefiting like a defensive player mindset, like a mindset of Hey, this is what I'm known for. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. They kind of like taking that taking that guy out of the, out of the game now, and it, it kind of like the refs are saying, "All right, we want the, the offensive player to be the, the aggressor instead of the defensive player." Yeah, for me, I think it's all good during the regular season because I feel like during the playoffs, it's not going to be like this. I think it's going to be all right, lock up, lock up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Right now, I think it's good um, for the league because, like they say, offense sells tickets. Yep. Um, and I think overall, I think the fact that there is more offense, I think it's a good thing. You know, the another thing that a lot of people aren't talking about that's really helping the situation also is the shot clock. You know, when yep. you get that, when you get the offensive rebound, setting it back to fourteen, you know, you got to make quicker decisions. You know what I'm saying? And yep. that's that's actually giving more time as well. You know, once you go on the opposite side, opposite end of the floor. So, I think I think the three and D guys are still there. Um, it's just it's just hit or miss now. As in before, it was like you got your Jimmy Butler, you got your Kawhi Leonard, you got your Paul George, you got your guys that you know actually lock up and really put the clamps on people. As in now, it's like you know you're defending, but at the same time, the officiating's been a lot more aggressive as well. Right, you know what I'm saying, and that's something that that's been up this year too. Because now it's like there's more scoring being being done because of the fact that guys can't really lock up the way that they usually were. You know, yep. you being aggressive as aggressive as you were defensively last year might not translate to how it's been how it's being called this year. So a lot more guys are, are falling back when they when they're going to close out and different things like that for the shots. Um, that's something I've noticed, and then on top of that. You know, um, there's there's a lot more, you know, there's a lot more flagrance, a lot more technicals going out there. So there's there's being a lot more points. I think that the NBA is trying to make an emphasis on points this year. So I, I, does it get does it get rid of the defenders? Sort of, kind of. But at the same time, I know this is all temporary. And I know that um, once it comes down to seeding and, and we need to lock up and, and figure out where we're going to be seated, one through eight. And when the postseason comes, I think that's when the NBA will really um, get back into its own. And, and that's when it becomes a, a half court game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right now, I feel like it's just running gun, running gun, running gun. You know, watching even watching the Thunder, the Thunder, they're, pace, they're, they're fast paced now. As in a couple of years ago, when I first came out here, it was half court, you know, and, and, and pick, your, pick your spots on the floor and execute it wasn't running gun like how it is now now you got westbrook you got you got schroeder you got pg and you got jeremy grant you got guys like that and they're just running up and down the court constantly so even with their guys you know what i'm saying it's just running running up and down you got blake running up and down like these guys are moving a lot more a lot more faster and quicker on the offensive end that they than they were previously so it, it's a new day and age and i think it started with the the houston rockets I think the Rockets really were that team that that set it set it up for this way because you got um Maury down there um with the analytics, you know, and now, you know, people are shooting that three ball a lot more fluently than they than they ever have. So yep. the three ball is definitely you got teams a- attempting 43s and more. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see this years ago, you know? Yep. A couple years ago, you know, Steven Adams. If if Stephen Adams was what he is today, back a couple of years ago, the Thunder probably would have won multiple titles. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, right. um, it's just it's just crazy how um how how the NBA is transcending and um how it's getting better. But um like I said, when it comes to the end of the season, when when seeding is very important, and when it comes to uh the playoffs, I think it'll get back to what we what we're used to seeing. But right now. Um, it's just running gun right now, and I'm not mad about it because you know it's more offense. You get more highlights. 
and offense sells tickets. So overall, I think um, it's good for the league. But when when it comes down to that nitty gritty at the end of the week, like the last two weeks of the season going into the playoffs, we'll get back to to what we like to see. So um, what what's your opinion on it? And um, you know, that's that's just my thought process, man. I don't know if you agree or not. Yeah, no, I mean, um, at first I thought that it would it would change uh, slower slower than it than it has. Yeah, uh, because I, like just playing like out there being out there is so different than like talking about it in the locker room. Like I remember when the refs came to the to the practice facility and was like, "Hey, look, this is how we're gonna call it. You guys just gotta adjust." And yeah. it's like, "Okay, all right, that's fine. We can adjust, but." Y'all, y'all have to be patient with with how we play because we're not gonna just all of a sudden just stop. Yeah, playing. overnight. Yeah, and just, and just say, all right, well, this is this is how we're gonna adjust and just let guys go by us, and then like we're on the bench because like, well, you know, they're playing defense. Like, coach is looking at us like, well, what are y'all doing? Y'all, y'all not playing a defense. We out here just going back and forth. Mm-hmm. I mean, so for for me, especially, it's like I'm a I'm a defensive minded player. Definitely. I, Go out there and and try to be in my best every single night against whoever the best like two guard is coming off the bench. So uh, me looking at like all right, so say for example last night we're playing against the Suns. I had to come mm-hmm. out. I got to guard either uh, Josh Jackson or I got to guard like uh, uh, Isaiah Cannon or like a Booker. Like if I'm, if he's still in the game when I come in, yeah. Like with with most guys like that, you got to be real physical with them. Like Josh Jackson, not really a shooter, so I got to go under screens. But a guy like like Booker, like uh, Devin Booker, you have to really go over everything. You have to be Definitely. physical with them and, yeah, and try yeah. to and try to get just his game. get him, yeah get him out of the game. And it's like if 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 the refs are telling you, hey, look, every time there's a bump or if you grab him, it's a foul. I'm gonna be in foul trouble. I'm gonna be in foul trouble as soon as like the yeah, game starts. Like, yeah, yeah. You can't bump. You can't grab. I mean, which is which is understandable. I, I I understand what they're talking about, but it's it's difficult. It's very difficult to to adjust to something like that. And because yeah, you still and, need to have an advantage as a defender as well, just as it, much as the offensive players having an advantage. It's got to be an equal playing field, equal playing mm-hmm. field. And um, but I, but like you said, um, going into the playoffs, I think it's it's going it's going really slow down cuz it's like yeah. that's how the playoffs has always been it's always been a physical like a slow methodical game trying to uh pretty much first to 100 most of the games aren't even at 100 so most of the games are like 89 to 93s or close to 100 like maybe 101 to to 99 you know it's all all those games are methodical it's not like you're out there just like fast breaking every single time it's like you're playing in the half court yeah so, so it, it it's, it'll be interesting to see like how we get down the stretch closer to the playoffs. How how it's gonna be called? I'll be I'm really be excited. And, hey, yeah, yeah. I honestly think, um, like I said, I honestly think it's gonna slow down. So that's my personal opinion. I think I think it'll slow down. Yeah. But um, my next topic yeah, is good. a topic that you know it's a topic that I definitely want to know about because I've seen numerous occasions. Whether it be, um, you know, Russ a couple years ago when we had opening night in Philly and Russ went for the layup and then the, the guy stuck stuck the middle fingers at him and, and yeah. was talking to him. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is KD recently got, got fined. Um, got fined uh, I think it was that Dallas game when the fans were heckling him. As, as an NBA player, as an NBA player, do you feel like the league is – do you feel like the league is protecting you in those situations when, when the the fans are actually, um, you know, when the fans are being disrespectful, heckling, and you know, what's your take on on the league finding you all for defending yourselves, and also, have you ever been heckled to that point where you you had to get back at a fan like that, you know, at any point in your career? Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a tough tough scenario because I feel like this. This like industry of being in the uh, in the National Basketball Association, the fans are close closer than any other sport that we have out there. Mm-hmm. Think about fo- football; they're about what twenty yards from from the field. That's true. Unless you score a touchdown, then you're in the, the back of the end zone. Then then you're at the fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Same thing with hockey. Same thing with well, I mean, if they're right close up, of course, but it's like a, a glass. You got the plastic there, yep. All right, so you can't you can't hear you can't hear what they're saying. The fans are saying, I mean, they're yelling, screaming, hitting on the on the on the glass. Yeah, the closest you would you would assume. Mm-hmm. NBA, it's like they're right up next to you. Like they can literally look you in the eye. You can look them in the eye, and like they could they could touch you if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. It's, it's probably like. The most like I don't know it's it's the most like interactive sport out there, and I think that sometimes fans they can say whatever they want and get away with it, and and like I mean say a player says hey look this guy's cussing me out this guy's putting me off, it's 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 difficult for you to say that and then, then all of a sudden like the security t- does action takes action upon it real fast because they might not have heard it or it's not as uh, like it might be on the other end of the court, like the they might be it might be in the opposing uh, baseline. It's like they don't care what's going on. Mm-hmm. So it's it's tough. It's tough to really like pinpoint and say, hey, look, this this should be taken out because I mean I think fans love that they love being a part of the game, but at some point they do take it too far. Uh, like you said, for example, like the Russ situation when the fan puts them off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I have been heckled, I've been numerous amount of times, especially like we were playing in Boston last year. Mm. Uh, we're winning the game. It's, it's down to the wire, but we're winning, and we're like the bench is all excited. I was on the bench at the time, and we're all standing up. The fans behind us are upset. The people on the baseline they're upset because we're standing up because they're losing. It's just, it's just a lot going on, and they start cussing at us. And it's like you you rather not get involved with it because it's like hey, like that's that's not that's not my that's not my problem. It's like. I, I know you're upset because y'all are losing, and, and at the same time we're blocking your view. But you can, you you bought those tickets on purpose. You wanted to be close to the action. Yeah. You you, you got to be able to to deal with that. And it's like when it's on the flip side, it's like the the home team is like on the baseline and they're standing up. Hey, you out there? Hand hand high five. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, like, true. that's true. You're doing it all. So mm-hmm. it, it's 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 like a it's it's like a catch twenty two. It's like hey, you don't know. If it's good, if it's too far, if it's, it's bad, you know. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. You, let, let me hear your opinion about it. My thing is, I want to ask you what What do you feel like is too far for a fan? Like, when is it when a fan's just going way too far? Like, what would be too far for you? I, I think if a fan starts like talking about your family and stuff like that, that's that's way too far. It's like they 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 really are at the fingertips of like going on their phones real fast, searching your family or searching your name on Google mm-hmm. and, and talking about your mom or your son or your daughter. You know what I mean? They, they can really <laughs> do anything at the, at the desire of what, whatever they're feeling that day. Like they might be drunk and yeah. say whatever they want or call you a worse name, worse name than that. And, and, and they can really tick you off. So I think when it gets to that point, that's, that's when it's too far. That's, that's really when it's too far. Yeah, no, nah, I I got you, cause um, you know, cause like I said, I'm not I've I've been around trash talking. I want to say I'm sorry for those Bostonians, cause when they start getting that beer, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I'm gonna say sorry for my city right now. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, we don't take losing lightly. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but um, but honestly though, I I I honestly I'm I'm with the players on this one, you know, because these fans. They be saying, I mean, even even in press row, I be hearing some of the stuff they be saying. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it's malicious sometimes, you know, especially if especially if you're not, you know, if you're not playing for the team, you know what I'm saying? So I think um, you know, the players need to be they need to be protected a little bit more. You know, like you said, you guys are the closest. You know what I'm saying? You guys interact the closest, you know, yeah. than than any other sport. And um, you know, with the whole KD situation. You know, it's like I'm looking at that and I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, they heckled him the whole game. So obviously by the time the 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 game that point he's getting to that boiling point and you know he is, I'm pretty sure he's brought it up to the referees or the security and they still they still were going, you know. Yeah. And, and at that point, as a player, I, I'm pretty sure you'd be like, you know what, I gotta take matters into my own hands now because the disrespect is getting to that level. Where I need to make sure they know that I'm not going to be disrespected. Yeah. So, you know, and and I, I I'm like I said, I'm with the players on this one. I, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, like you said, you know, it, it's a players' league, 
early, you know, earlier you said it's a players' league, and I and I, I definitely vouch for that. You know, these players need to be respected, and the fact that people can say whatever they want because they're that close, or because you know they have way too many beers or anything like that, it shouldn't be tolerated. I understand talking about you suck and stuff like that. That's different, you know what I'm saying? Because they're just talking about the game. But when yep. you get personal stuff or start or start talking about the person as a whole, like like I, I'm I'm pretty sure somebody probably said KD's a cupcake or this that, and a third yep. and was trying to disrespect him on that type of level, that's uncalled for. You know, keep it keep it classy and you know, at the end of the day, keep it keep it within the game. You know what I'm saying? Like like good trash talking. Good trash talking would be you know, like when um, I, I think it was LeBron, his first year in the league, um, when LeBron and um and Chris Bosh's girlfriend or something like that, they went at it, and she's talking about, oh, my man's team's better. Than, you know, that's that's good trash talk. You right. know what I'm saying? When, when she kept talking trash, saying, you're going to miss, you're going to miss, and LeBron kept making it, and then at the end of the game, he said, yeah, because of her right there, they, they, that's the reason why the Raptors lost, because of her. You know, that's good trash talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you get into stuff talking about, you know, craziness, like what same situation that happened with Marcus Smart when he was at Oklahoma State, you know, with that situation when the player called I mean, the fan called him an N-word. Different right. things like that, like that's uncalled for. You know what I'm saying? So NBA has to watch out for what the fans are also saying as well because the fans, be they be ruthless. I've, I've seen videos with fans calling players the B-word and whatever. You know what I'm saying? So... These players got to be protected just as much as they try to protect the fans in those situations. Right. Yep. Uh, that's my take on it, man. But, yeah. 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 What you what you what you got for me, man? All right. Next next topic. Uh, got two more for you. Um, so um, going to like the sneaker world, mm -hmm. being a sneakerhead, like a sneaker free agent, an advantage when it comes to being a sneaker king, like. For example, um, you look at like guys like Tory and Prince. You look at guys like Montrez Harrell. You look mm -hmm. at guys like Lance Stevenson and, and Peter Tucker. It's like all of them are free agents right now. And mm -hmm. I would I would assume in my mind, it's like, hey, those guys are probably up there, uh, like the top four or five guys in in the sneaker sneaker like uh, sneakerhead talk of, hey, this guy could be leading the race. Just yeah. how much how much heat they're bringing out? Yeah, like do you think that's that's a realistic from a real, realistic standpoint? Like, hey, that's a good thing or a bad thing for like sneakerheads? It's like should it be like one specific brand, and when it's like that actually that matters more, or does it think do you think that guys that they come up with their own like game plan of like how myself the Q4 how I'm customizing the kicks, and then you look at guys like. Uh, especially Dinwiddie, he's doing the same same exact thing. Like he has a new pair of shoes every yeah. single game. It's like he has like a uh, a theme, something that that means yeah. more to him personally. Or like Kyrie, for example, Kyrie, he has the same thing. He has a theme with every single shoe that he's been wearing. So it's uh -huh. like it's a theme in the shoe. Like what what do you think is is better for for right now? I I feel like right now this is. You know, and and I don't mean to say this to you, bro, but this it feels like it's like it's like the I feel like these NBA players right now, like the Lance Stevensons and and, and uh, Montrell and and um, PJ Tuckers, I feel like right now, like you got to look at them like indie artists, you know, like independent art, music artists. You right. know, they're not signed to a label, they're not signed to a major, but at the same time, they have freedom, and with that freedom, you get the opportunity to be talked about at all times. You know what I'm saying? They they're not they're not held down to to any one brand, and they can do whatever they want to do. So I think the they're, they're a part of the new wave, like that StockX and and like um the Goat app and 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 um also I think Montreal just um I think he just um he just got on with another um another company as well. I think Stadium Goods or something like that. So oh he did okay, yeah okay. yeah. So it's like the fact that you you getting in these little deals. With these coincidement, um, you know, coincidement companies and different different sneaker companies that sell resell sneakers, that's actually I I feel like that's starting to be the new wave, you know, honestly, because now they're able to be talked about a lot more than being confined with one shoe, you know what I'm saying? As in with like a Kyrie or somebody that has a signature, including yourself, 
you got to rock your signature and then you got to kind of customize it or have a different colorway that, you know, still represents you within that, that same, that same branded model shoe though, as in yeah. with free agents, they just, they just breaking out heat left and right. And they're being yeah. talked about because of the fact that, you know, they're bringing out that heat, you know, like you can have, you know, you can have like your X-Men custom, which I thought was super dope and underrated. You can have your X-Men custom go up against Lance Stevenson, but Lance Stevenson coming out the cut with like the Kobe, you know, the Kobe fade to black collection, like any one of those, you yeah. know, what I'm saying? and people are going to bring up the fade to black because that's that's a grail. As in with with your X Men custom, they're gonna be like, "Oh, all right, well, he's rocking a custom." You see what I'm saying? Yep. So I feel like you're at a disadvantage right now because of the fact that these free, sneaker free agents are able to do whatever they want, or you could be like a PJ Tucker, somebody that has well connections, and he's dibbling and dabbling into different, you know, PEs and stuff like that. I think that's why PJ Tucker is just like on another level because he's going into per people's personal collections sample collections like you know what i'm saying like he's taking it to that next level like there's holy holy grills but he's taking it to the maximum like the, the third power of holy grills because he's going into he got connects at schools he got connects in people's like from ogs back in the game whether it be michael finley quentin richardson like he's going he's all over the place with it so it's it's really tough to try to, you know, defeat a person in that in that aspect. But it's also good to have your own shoe. And I feel like that's something that they also would want. But they also are bringing up a different way to be talked about. And that's why I think being a sneaker free agent is, is probably really, really good right now. Because, you know, you're, you're being talked about on a daily. But Spencer, that dude, he got his own brand. And that's something that nobody's ever seen before. Um, he got his own brand, his own shoe, and he's customizing it the way he wants to. You know, that's that's somebody that I can't wait till they come out here. I would love to just pick his brain and talk to him about it because he's an NBA player that created his own shoe brand. You know what I'm saying? That's something that's never been done. Yeah. And, um, no, and, and he's, a great he, yeah, he's definitely breaking the barriers. So I like the 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 customs that he's doing because – like when he played D Wade, he had the he had the South Beach, you know South South Beach theme. Um, and he he had a different couple of different themes and stuff like that. I think he has a Biggie theme for the jerseys that they got. So overall, yeah. I think oh yeah, like, overall, who, who, overall yeah, I think he's, he's stepping it up, and um, I like what you're doing too. Don't get me wrong, and, and I wouldn't want you to get discouraged either. I just think that, um, you know, with the customs comes a point in time where people are like, that's the same shoe, same shoe, same shoe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, as in with the free agents, they kind of get to do their own thing. So I feel like you're at a disadvantage, but at the same time, they're at a disadvantage because you have stability, you know, on the court and off the court. They don't have right. that stability on and off the court. So it, I would give the nod to you as being a signature athlete, but at the same time, when it comes to publicity, the sneaker free agent's going to get that no matter what because they can wear whatever they want. What's your yeah. thought on that? No, it's it's uh, I I really agree with what you're saying with the the standpoint of like, hey, it is, um, I guess, I guess you say a commercialized industry that we're in. It's like being able to wear whatever you want on the floor, being able to yeah. rock the, the the latest kicks that that have come out for all these different brands. Yeah, that's that's what the fans want to see. They really want to see something that they can really relate to and like. The history of the shoes. I think that's what that's what means the most for me. Yeah. Uh, when I see these guys rock different, um, like uh, I saw Montrez, he wore like a Reebok, and then he wore an one in the same game. He like I think he wore the yeah. uh, Allen Iverson yeah. and then yep. the questions, and then he wore the um, the the an one. Yeah. I forget yeah. the name of them. The Tai Chi. Yeah. Tai Chi. Yeah, yeah. He wore the Tai Chi's in the game. I'm like, that's that that means a lot to me because. To wear two different styles of shoes in a game and like two different swags, I think that that means so much more from a from a sneaker standpoint, like definitely. a sneakerhead standpoint. Definitely, definitely. That's that's dope. That's dope to me. But at the same time, it's like like I wanted to ask somebody that's like in your status too. It's like, can somebody like myself or like uh Spencer keep up with that? It's like it's tough to keep up with that because you really have to 
uh, have so much creativity in one single shoe that the fans are like, how, well, you're customizing all these shoes. Well, how can I even get these shoes since you, you're customizing? That's true. That's true. As in when when they wear something, it's like, oh, let me go see. Oh, he had the Kobe 4 on or whatever. Like, You know what I'm saying? So they can look it up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and, and that's and that's when they really can they stand out and say, hey, look, I, you, I found this shoe on whatever the app might be. It's like GOAT, for example, like with, yeah. with, uh, with Kuzma. It's like he's sponsored by GOAT, but at the same time, it's what people are not looking at anymore. It's like he's still rocking like the PEs of Kobe. Like he's still out there wearing like Kobe, yeah. the, the new Kobe's, mm-hmm. but just in just in different colorways. He had, I hadn't seen him wear anything crazy but like two or three games he wore like the lebron uh um i think lebron what was it lebron like uh when he when he went back to cleveland he wore the uh the throwback lebron colorways from cleveland cavaliers okay he, he might have wore them in the first quarter or something like that or maybe like to warm up and then he like changed back out into whatever else he had to wear yeah. so uh i mean i don't know if like that's like and a good example because it's like is he really like showcasing what goat can really do for him? It's like they if they are, are really making a crazy effort, can they really say, all right, well, we're going to get you all these shoes that are old OGs, and you have to rock each one of these each game, and you can change, yeah, but we want we want to get like a photographer to catch capture every moment of you wearing definitely. them, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, I and then. Uh, just playing, we played PJ in another day. It's like PJ wore three different, four different pairs of shoes in the same game. He wore two in the first half, and then he wore, uh, I think he wore like two more in the second half. He wore like the, I remember he wore uh, the Grinches. He wore uh, LeBron somethings, uh, uh, and then he wore. Um, was it LeBron six? I think it was LeBron. It might have been LeBron six or six, five or six, one or two. I think it was six. Yeah, I think I yeah, seen yeah six. And he wore like another pair of shoes, and I'm like, man, that's that's tough to wear all them shoes in one game. It's like those are all different types of shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like I mean, hey, it's like what? Where's the comfort come from? Yeah, yeah. That's that's you know? the main thing. It's like you 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 can rock the the craziest heat, the best shoes, but just I just want them to be com- like comfortable and like be able to hoop like do your thing like don't like don't be out there like wearing them just because you're trying to win the sticky king wear them because you know what all right i've worn these in practice i broke them in hey i'm good to go yeah, I, exactly, I know my exactly. game i'm gonna be good exactly. yeah that I, i'm with you on that it's like it's cool to try to obtain the sneaker king thing because i feel like sometimes it's like high school you know you want to be the valid victorian you know what i'm saying like at the end of the day it's like you know you can get that but it's like are you trying to go for it every single – you know what I'm saying? Like, at some point in time, it's like, let it be – let it come genuine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like four times, that's forcing the issue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, we know you're killing the game, but four in one game? Yeah. It's like, hey, we know we know you're killing the game. It's like, hey, I understand. I, I, I understand you're killing it. But. Yeah, but it's like, geez, man, like – can, can a brother have some room to get in there? You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. I'm just trying to sneak in there. Just give me a little, little props, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He trying to have all when, when, when these different, uh, you know, different sneaker um outlets and stuff do do their little five top five. He's trying to be top five four he's times. Trying top, he's trying, top, he's, top he's trying five, to take right, up yeah. all four of the spots. All four of the spots. Like, hey, look, Only one spot, spots, spot. Right. Yeah, that's what he's doing, man. So. You know, more power to him. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I, I'm i all I'm all for it when it comes to doing it genuinely. And I can see if he rocked him one per game where he's just killing it. Then that's, you know what I'm saying? That's cool to me. But, like, for me, it's like don't force the situation. Like, four different sneakers, like, it's still about the game of basketball. And you want to make sure that your feet are comfortable in every single thing that you wear. But if you're constantly changing every quarter what sneakers you're wearing, your foot's got to adjust to that as well. Yeah, you know, so that's how I look at it. He's he's definitely he's bringing that heat on the court. I ain't mad at him, so I, I respect it. So, but for you though, do you would do you like miss that moment? Do you feel like you're missing the fun right now? Because being a sneakerhead, you know, I I know I know that you see everything that everybody else is wearing, and you're like, man, you know, am I missing the fun, or is like, hey, look, I, hey, I got my own signature, so I'm good. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I really contemplated that um, two summers ago. Like, hey, look, 
whether I want to be a sneaker free agent or go with like a newer brand where I can really like make my mark, like leave a mark underneath yeah. it, you know. And uh, I really contemplated like, hey, look, should I, should I do this because then I can't wear all my shoes that I have. It's like I, I I've been collected for all these last couple of years, and it's like, man, I can't wear all my heat. But at the same time, in the same instance, it's like, would I even be comfortable in wearing all those shoes? Because I know myself, like I'll be out there trying to go for the sneaky king. But it's like, should I just be patient and just like say, all right, well, if if something like this was to come about, maybe it's gonna come about later on. Maybe not right yeah. now. Maybe this is my time to look, like try to see if I can make my mark on uh, just, like, playing well and then, like, be uh, in, like, a consistent shoe for right now until, like, hey, look, I left my mark on playing. Look, I, I can, like, move to, like, what I love and, like, that sneakers and wear my sneakers yeah. in the game, you know? Mm-hmm. So that, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm more focused on. It's, like, being with a newer brand, it's, like, hey, we're, we're leaving the mark and I'm, I'm able to, like, venture out like this past summer i went to china this upcoming summer i'm hoping to go a couple different places so that's what i'm really looking forward to in and like all including like me just being a part of like a few individuals and us by teaming up and trying to grow this brand so that's why i'm like i'm more excited about that right now and 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 my play too is like that's the that's the main two things that i'm focused on right now so that's that's been cool got you got you um well that was your topic my topic um obviously you know Allen Iverson he's a he's a huge guy and this kind of goes off the Philly ties and everything um I've seen him big in the Philly community community but um just talk about what he's done to for the league overall and what he's done for you as a as a as a two guard you know what I'm saying growing up I'm pretty sure you watched AI and some of his games just talk about what you know he means to the game of basketball and what he means to the NBA, and um, also if you had a moment, you know, with him, just talk about that moment if you can. Yeah, no, I mean AI is is a big influencer in my life, and just me growing up, like my mom is from Philadelphia, so growing up, that's all I used to watch was the Sixers. Like that was like a favorite team of mine. I I, I, really, I never had a favorite team, but like that was a team that I, I normally watch because I used to love yeah. Allen Iverson. Yeah, and um, just being able to watch like him and Aaron McKee and yep. Tyrone Hill, or, like all those guys, like I remember them because they were just vividly in my mind on like how they played and and like how he played. Yeah, um, and and he was a smaller guard, and I like I never thought I'd be a smaller guard because my dad he's six five six six. I'm like thinking, all right, well, hey, that'd be a blessing to be the same height as him, but I. I wasn't blessed enough to, to get his 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 height, so I was like, all right, well, I'm six two, uh, I'm a smaller guard. I was like, hey, I'm gonna yeah. go out here and do my thing. I, I, and I, I'm hey, I'm blessed to be able to score the ball like I do. I mean, I can really shoot it. So, um, I, I just love to, to score the ball and play D. And and that was Allen Iverson to a key. It's like I never saw him playing like lockdown D, but he was like he played so hard. That's what he always yeah. was known for. Like he would. He would he would be fearless in the game. He would go out there, attack the basket, fall down. I mean, it looked like sometimes he broke his like his his like back or something like that, and he like yeah. fall down. Like yeah. he would hit that whole, he would hit like, that floor hard, hard. He would hit it hard, and you like dang, like that's 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 tough. But he would get back up. He would always get back up. He ne- you mm-hmm. never see him like, hey, that's it, y'all. I, I'm hurt tonight. I'm gonna just I'm gonna take a night off. He never would do that. I mean, yeah. The whole practice practice thing was a different scenario, but like the games, he would never do anything that would like jeopardize his like his fans you know his fans yeah. always loved him because of that yeah um and then like that was just on the court but off the court i mean you gotta think he changed the culture of the nba like yeah. guys used to wear whatever to the games and then all of a sudden he used to he used to come in he had the the, the baggy clothes he had uh the jury he had um Blue the rag. different the do rag, the 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 hats. He, I mean, he had a whole bunch of different swags that he had. Yeah, and they like they changed that whole rule because of him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think that's why guys nowadays come into games like so much more stylish because we had for the longest we had like a a, a, a like a limitation of what you could wear. You could either wear uh, some nice clothes or you would wear sweatpants to the game, which would be like team issue. Yeah, 
And and now you look at it where uh, it's kind of like more lenient where you can wear team issued sweats, but like most guys, they dress up, they try to like be stylish and wear like a variety of different clothes. Mm-hmm. And that's where I, I think that's where I'm I'm at right now. It's like I'm like I'm always being professional, wearing like suits and wearing different things to the games. And yeah. I, I think that that's why like I love to be fashionable because that era that era changed everybody, and it's like it made. I think my generation the way it is now. So that's Definitely. that's my whole instance. But I mean, I don't know. You you tell me from the outside looking in, like I know how, how I influence you. Yeah, he I mean, I I'm I'm definitely one of those. I'm I'm only five ten, five eleven. So like for me growing up playing basketball, you know, I always watched Allen Iverson and and uh I still <laughs> I still can remember uh, watching that finals game, that game one. My mom, she was uh she was telling me to um she was telling me I had to go to bed, but there was no way I was going to bed without watching to see that the the ending of that outcome. So uh, I remember vividly <laughs> she came in because what she came in and um she was like, "Didn't I tell you to turn the TV off?" I'm like, "Mom, I was like, it's, it's Lakers versus Sixers. AI AI's playing." Right, and, right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and she came in there, and gave me like a little mini mini beat down, a couple slaps upside the head or whatever. And she was like, go back to bed. I was like, all right. So I turned it off. Then I put it, I turned it back on like five minutes later. And uh, what I did was I put the towels under the under the door <laughs> so she couldn't see the, the light from the TV. So I was yeah. able to watch that. And uh, I watched the Tyron Lue situation. That's iconic. Um, yeah. You know, when he when he made the shot over him, stepped over him. And uh, yep. matter, of fact, matter of fact, Tyler Lockett did that celebration yesterday. Um, yeah, he did. He did. He I did. Saw that. That yep. Tough. So that lets you know he translated over the NFL. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, everybody, everybody, but, everybody can relate. Everybody can relate. Definitely, he's so relatable. And um, you know, just growing up watching him, he never, never quit. Went through all those injuries, man. I can remember he went up against some of those Goliaths, Vince Carter, Ray Allen. Uh, I remember he went up against Kobe and them. Um, went up against Mike. You know, so many, so many. Um you know, battles and, and, and obstacles he had to get through just to get to the top. And um, I still remember that that um, 2000, I think it was 2001 MVP season uh, that he had. And, um, you know, it was just it was just special. It was iconic. Um, and, um, you know, like you said, the players, Eric Snow, George Lynch, you know, Aaron McKee, Matt Geiger, you know, like he, yep. he was bringing some players, bringing some players with him. Um you know, to the promised land that um, you know, nobody ever wanted to, you know, thought they can get them to to get there. So, you know, having Larry Brown, I think, helped him out a lot too, because he he saw him as a as a father figure and as a young African American growing up. You know, I had my dad around, but at the same time, I I also wanted to latch on to other people that could be father figures, and that's something that AI embraced. You know, sometimes being a young African American male. You know, you don't want somebody that's not your father talking to you. But the fact that he was open to Larry Brown teaching him how to be a professional and different things like that, that opened the avenue in the in the lane for other guys, other African Americans to be like, you know what, it's okay to take advice from other people too. You know, because because growing up, you know, we don't really, we didn't really, I don't know if you can relate, but like growing up, like you didn't want other people telling you what to do. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't your your, your parents. You know, yep. sometimes you felt some type of way, like, yo, you're not my dad, you're not my mom, or whatever like that. And uh, just seeing AI, his relationship with Larry Brown grow, that made me be more open to other people in my neighborhood and make me more open to to teachers and different different role models that I had in my life at the time. But um, like you said, on the court, he was a beast. And off the court, he changed the game. He changed the style. You know, so many people look at what he did and um and, and they look at sort of like what Westbrook's doing right now, you know Westbrook, you know he's bringing a different style to the table, but at the same time, the way that Westbrook plays, he never takes a night off, and that and his mentality reminds me of Allen Iverson's you know mentality too. So, just seeing what he been he he went through on and off the court, whether it be with his mom and and and, and um you know being with his mom all the time, and uh, just the different things that he did, um meant a lot and he was so relatable he was getting his hair braided on the bench i mean you know he was, yeah. <laughs> he was doing he was doing he different was doing stuff that, he was doing stuff we never seen you know wearing the baggy clothes and he made it look so cool to be in the nba and and it's cool to be in the nba don't get me wrong now but at that time they were wearing you know them them china suits you know a nietzsche and and all the stuff that uh kevin garnett was telling um 
you know, um, what's his name to um to um to burn? Remember um, when he was like, what's his name right now? It's gonna bother me too. Um, dang it, my guy. What, 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 what was he? At? Craig Sagan. Oh, Craig Sagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Remember all the suits that he was wearing? Those were the type of suits that people were wearing to the games. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? So once once AI came in there, that kind of like switched it up, you know, and, and people stopped wearing those suits, you know, because he, he broke that barrier, you know. So uh, but like, you know, all those suits that they used to wear, those Chinese suits and stuff coming to the game and stuff, because because players back then, you know, they're six, eight, you know, almost seven feet, whatever like that, that range. And they had to get custom made suits. So people, right, people right. you know, and people didn't people didn't realize that AI was like, look, this is not me. I'm a I'm gonna do what I do. And that's kind of the mentality I have now. When I post stuff on Instagram and social media, it's like if you rocking with me, you rocking with me. I'm not gonna yep. be chasing you. I'm gonna do it my way. You yep. know what I'm saying? And that's the mentality that I have as a media member. It's like I'm not gonna wear the suit and tie and be and be like you guys. I can still be professional, but I can do it my way. And that's the same. Right. Same way, same attitude that AI had. So, you know, he 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 definitely had a big role on me, whether it was my basketball career and me playing all the way to all the way to being in the media, you know, and the, being in the locker rooms, you know. So, you know, he was a game changer and, I, and a trendsetter. And I feel like I'm a trendsetter, too, because a lot of people weren't um, a lot of people weren't wearing casual clothes and sneakers and different things like that. Um, when I got into the got into the media game back in 2009. So you know, I was a I was a different breed. I was a breath of fresh air, and I I feel like I'm one of those first pioneers slash trendsetters that that definitely was in them locker rooms that was um changing it up because it was something that was relatable. The players were like, man, we actually got somebody in here that's rocking some some Jordan 11, some Conkers, or, or whatever I'm rocking. You know what I'm saying? It's relatable and it and it opened dialogue. And yep. anytime. People are op- people feel comfortable. They're gonna open dialogue to you any way they can, and that was one of the ways that I was able to express who I was. Yep, yep, and and, and that's what like I always tell people is like it might not be like what you have on like stylish wise, but your feet like your feet they 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 talk about a lot like of your personality. You know what they I mean? Tell like, a story. Who you are. Yeah, they tell a story. Yep, they definitely tell a story, man. So. What you got? What you got next for me? All right. So, uh, last last topic I got for you is, uh, what what's your most memorable like moment from Thanksgiving? Like whether I was as a kid, or uh, um, or like as now, like as as time has went on, like as mm-hmm. of now, like what's your most memorable moment? It could be anything. I, I just think that since it's hard, it's the holiday season, and we just passed yeah. up Thanksgiving. I think it'd be great to like, like let the fans like know about like those moments, you know, just to be a part of us, you know, because they they represent us, supporting us. So uh, it'd be great to hear. It'd be great to hear. Uh, for me, I think the most memorable um, pod, um, I was about to say most memorable podcast. <laughs> this is, but uh, <laughs> I think the most memorable uh, Thanksgiving for me um, um, would be. I would I would honestly say it would be the the one from uh, 2014, uh, okay. maybe 2014 2015. I think it was like the um, I think it was the um, I think it was the the year the the first or second year I was out here. I ended up going back home. I surprised my family, and I went home for Thanksgiving. And um, you know, it, obviously holidays aren't the same without my dad. Um, right. That's the way he passed away in 2010. But um, just having both sides of the family, being able to see both sides, that meant a lot to me. Um, that's something that that I hold dear to me, to my heart. Um, and it was just one of those situations where I went home and was able to see my mom and my sister, and that kind of gave me that that uh kind of gave me that clarification, that uh that confirmation, you know, that everything was going to be all right and um. And it and it let me know that they embraced the fact that they knew I made the right decision by staying in Oklahoma City and um and and, and making that move to come cover the Thunder um and and the fa- the fact that my family embraced that decision together that I I always hold that because um it was just a good time we were all cracking jokes everybody was able to get together and just eat food and fellowship and 
we just talked about good stories. We talked about stories of my dad. We talked about, um, you know, just talked about everything. You know, the fact that you can um, be able to talk, you know, talk to your, your, your family about anything and laugh with them about anything. You know, that means the most. My family, they're big on Medea. So we we be watching Medea's on um on holidays and stuff like that. So um that one meant the most to me because I was able to come back home and and, and I came back on my own like I, I made the right decision. You know that yeah. was that was a confirmation like uh I, I I did it. You know what I'm saying? Like I left the house, but I'm coming back on my own terms. So many people leave home and they go right back home because they can't handle it. Yeah, and um especially our people. You know we'll we'll leave. And get and and think. Okay, I got this. We're on our feet. You know, I'm on my feet, um, and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, you go right back home because you know what? I can't handle it, or you know, it's too much pressure, or whatever like that. So the fact that I was able to go back home on my own terms for that Thanksgiving to let my family know, like I'm on my two feet, everything's gonna be good. Oklahoma's where I'm at right now, and I'm gonna make it my home. But at the same time. I made the right decision, and um, just to hear it from my family and friends, that meant a lot to me. So that one, would, that one means the most to me. What about you? Uh, for me, um, it's so funny. I, I go back all the way um, when I was in high school. Um, so this is when I had like a few of my aunties still alive and um, that have passed on. But uh, uh, this was my I want to say senior year in high school. Yeah. Um, so this was 20, 2010. Yeah, this was twenty ten. So um, we we actually had a chance to like have pretty much almost all my family. So in back in Baton Rouge, uh, both me and my wife are from Baton Rouge, but um, my family, which is like. My my whole my dad like I mentioned before my mom was from Philadelphia but my dad is from Baton Rouge and I have like aunts and uncles all that still live down there and uh, it was great to have all of them my parents and um and then my wife's fan, wife or well, my girlfriend at the time but my wife now uh yeah. her her family as well like we all had a chance to like come over to my my uh, parents house and, and like we had everybody there like we all like my dad he uh. He has like a big like um frying pit outside and uh he like fried turkey, we did turducken, we did this, just 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 I mean literally threw down and um and we do like bell peppers and everything like like that. Yeah and, and I just remember just like seeing everybody's face and just like being around everybody because you just never know. You just never know in life like things change very fast and I remember like the next year um this is before my auntie had passed and like years after that it's like people just things change people's like um relationships and just all, a whole bunch of stuff changes but it was just crazy to see like all my family and i'm a big family guy i love having my family around and, and just seeing the smiles like I, I don't i never like especially around like holiday season i never ask for gifts or anything like that i just want to see my family and like be around them and see them smile and when i see them smile right. it makes all inside so uh, uh just being able to see that that was amazing and I, yeah. that was one of the, my, my best moments uh that's just from giving yeah now that's what's up man it's all about family time and it's all about you know family when it comes to, especially for me man so i i definitely agree with you on that one uh yeah. for me my last topic is uh wanted to get your thoughts on the on the nike pg 2.5 playstation and uh, obviously, he just debuted him against um, Golden State. I want yep. to get your take on him. Your take on him. Will you be grabbing him on December first? And uh, just just get laid on me, man. What's your what's your what's your thoughts, man? Nah, nah. I really, I really am enjoying what he's doing. Um, I I told this with a couple of our uh, equipment guys. I was like, look, what he's doing with PlayStation has been amazing. I know him. And, like pretty much PlayStation and Nike kind of teamed up to really like do the best job they can for him. And I yeah. think it brings back a lot of memories for all the kids. Like PlayStation 4 was last year. Yeah. Now this year he goes back to PlayStation. And it's like yeah. I, I like as soon as I, I remember seeing like the pictures of it. I remember we talked about like a whole bunch of stuff you had in store. Just seeing yeah. it when you yeah, Nike yeah I, told, I told you it was coming. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me it was coming, and uh, I mean, just to see like the PlayStation and just like the the detail they put into the shoe. That's, I mean, that that's gonna be dope. That's gonna be dope to to see in person. And I'm I'm probably not gonna be able to win them. I know like the 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 sneakers app is always like hit or miss. It's like you you can really like you can win sometimes, you can lose sometimes. And I know my luck. I'm probably not gonna win, but I'll I'll definitely capture them, like get them another time. I I'll probably like. Get them on StockX or something like that. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll make sure. I, I got you. I got you. I got you on them. You you getting yeah. on the podcast? I got you. <laughs> All right, you good. Uh, appreciate it. Can I can't have my co-host? You know what I'm saying? PlayStation list. You know what I'm saying? So we we we'll yeah, make, yeah 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 we'll make it happen. Dude. Just keep just uh, keep me in mind with them Q4s, man. That's all I'm saying. I got you. I got nice you. Little, ain't no thing. Nice little nice little Q4 P. You know, customize. You know, hook a brother up. I got you. I got you. All right. But yeah, what about yeah. you? What you? What you thought? I mean, I know you've seen them. You've already like knew what's going on, but yeah, like it's like you seeing them early on. Like I, I want to get your first like impression when you first saw them mm -hmm. when you out at, out in Oregon. Like what you thought? Like man, when I first saw them, man, I was like, I said, man, I said this is crazy. They said, yeah. They said we got a whole kit coming with it. We're gonna have a suitcase. Um, dad hat, beanie, um, comes with the system. And I think they're making a system. I think the system has the HDMI. So it's like equipped to the new technology, which is going to be so much crazier. Um, it's just, you know, when I saw it, man, I just, I was like, man, this is it. But when you see what, what else they got coming, okay, man, I can't speak on it, but uh, it, it's going to it's gonna get even better though. It's going to get even better. Okay. You know, because the PG lines just it just keeps going. But when I first saw the gray joints in person and held them in my hand in Oregon, I was like, man, I said this is special because it brought back those mem those memories, you know, of playing the PlayStation One. And when I first got it, you know, I was I was living at my dad's house at that time, and it brought back so many memories when I was holding the shoe, and um, and I appreciated that moment because. You know, I'm a Sony guy. You know what I'm saying? I know you're an Xbox guy, but for me, I'm a I'm a Sony guy. So you know, being able to have that shoe in my hand and and see the the, the details. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be you know the different symbols on it. You know, I loved it with the strap. I thought that was dope. Um, but you know, it, just having that shoe in my hand, I was like, man, this is this is it. But I want to know from you, which one is better, the PS, the the PlayStation Four? Or the PlayStation One, the PG Two, or the the Two Point Five. See, I, I gotta really see it in person. And uh, okay, uh, just to back you up one second though, I, I used to be a Sony guy. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a Sony so guy. What, so what happened? Man, it's so funny because I, I heard the best players was on Xbox. Oh and man, get up I, out of here! I, I moved over because I'm in a league on Madden, so I'm in a league on Madden on Xbox. And like I kind of like just transferred over. I was just like, well, look, I'm in this league. I might as well get uh, 2K for Xbox. I might as well get Grand Theft. I might as well get the games that I always play on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I still have my PlayStation. It's still here at the crib, but I just don't be. I'm not on it. I'm not on it enough. I, don't, I, don't, I, I never turn it on. Like that. I need to hook it up just to get it ready. You know, fired up when I, when I have some time. But uh, I got you. But uh, yeah. Now to go back to your question. Uh, nah, it's it's um uh, like place the like. To see them in person, like the PlayStation 4 is like from last year, and then to see the PS PS uh the PlayStation, uh it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see because like last year they had the little like the tongue it, it lit up, so that that was dope. They had it still the, does uh, it still does it on these. It still does it on those. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay. The light up on this one is crazy because it goes from lighting up from down all the way up, and then it goes like from the top all the way down. So like it's like quicksand this time. You'll see it. Oh, see what I'm saying? See, I need to see it in hand. I got to see yeah, it in yeah. hand. I got so you. I really discuss the difference. Like, that's, but, like, the thing about what I told a couple people before, because I, I, I wore my PlayStation. I was, I was like, pra I've been practicing in my PlayStation. It's like, I'm going to wear my sneakers. Like, I'm not going to just, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I respect that. I'm going to wear them. And it's like, I know PG probably got, he probably got tons of them just because he, Man, that's he his shoe. He got a P.E. got a P -E mountain in his yeah. locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's like, I know, like, he probably got a, a couple of PlayStation like pairs laying around, and mm -hmm. he just like I'm gonna just save them for later. But like he, 
when he wears them in the game, it means so much. To, I know the fans and just to be a part of that. It's like definitely, man, that's dope to see like the PlayStation on the court. You know, PlayStation more um, regular than um, PlayStation Four. So definitely, I, I can't wait to see them both in person and like compare the two. You know, definitely, nah, nah. I, I definitely, um, I can't wait to be able to compare both of them as well. My yeah. last question, and, and I want to make this quick. Yeah. Um, who's the best? Who's the best NBA gamer besides you? Like what? What game? What game? Or it doesn't uh, matter. Okay, let's go Madden and then Two K. Madden. Uh, I don't know about Madden because I haven't really played that many guys. I mean, I played like Stanley Johnson. I played against him. I beat him. So, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't give him no credit. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they got a dude on our team, Zach Lofton. He actually is pretty good. I, I, he was telling me that like, he was like top five in, in the country at one point. So okay. Uh, I, but I haven't played him yet, so I, don't, I gotta I gotta test his test his stick skill and see what he, he really about. Um, and then uh, the UFC, like that's all like Reggie Jack, um, yeah. Stan, Stanley, Andre, they all play UFC, so they real good at that. Um, when it comes to 2K, I I really don't know because we we haven't had like a 2K tournament on our team before. We never done that, so okay. Uh, I I really want to see like who who is pretty good at that because got you. Uh, and then at the end of the day, it's like you do like a little random randomization to see see who the best one is. You know. Yeah. Have you played against people um around the league as well? Uh, around the league. Uh, not really. I haven't really played that many guys. Like most of the guys, like if we play online, it's like one or two times, and we really don't play. we play we play like in the park and stuff like that. We never really play online. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, well, for me, for me, you know, I, I, I beat you. Yeah, you beat me. You beat me. <laughs> so you I got that that upper leg. Um, yeah, you got me. I beat um, I beat Andre Robertson. Um, he's he's nasty in FIFA though. I can't. Yeah, I can't FIFA, him. Yeah. He on another level. But um, who else? I'm trying to think who else I've played against. I, I'm in the same boat as you, though. I've been in the park with a lot of them. I yeah. haven't really, like, played no one-on-ones or whatever like that, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been in the park with a couple of them, so... It's different. I haven't played Madden... Um, I haven't played Madden against any NBA players either, so... It, it is what it is, but, you know, it's all good. We at the we at the end of the end of the podcast, man, but uh, had a great show. We're gonna keep these we're gonna keep these episodes flowing, man. You know what I'm saying? This is episode four, I believe. So four, yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna keep it going, but uh let everybody know where they can find you at, man. Uh make sure you guys check me out on IG. You got LG Kicks Nine, you got Lane Galloway Ten, and then you have on Twitter, Lane Galloway Ten. Uh and then check me out on YouTube, uh Lane Galloway Ten. So make sure you guys tune in. Uh and if you wanna play me on, on Xbox, ball is my life. 10 with an eye in, 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 the, in the 10. So make sure you guys check me out. And then uh, where, where do you find you at, Trav? Uh, you can find me at Sneaker Reporter on everything, whether it be PS4, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, all the above, Sneaker Reporter. Um, and then, um, you know, also make sure you check out the A Day in Our Kicks, the YouTube channel. Um, make sure y'all check out the podcast on iTunes. We were, we were ranked. I think 50th on um on the um the iTunes podcast for sports. So you gotta continue to keep it flowing, um, so we don't lose that ranking. But yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So we gotta just keep them pumping out. I know with the holidays and everything like that. And last episode, I was getting over being sick. So we we back to the regular scheduled program. Yep. And definitely want to say thank you and thank you to everybody listening. We gonna wrap it up for episode four, but we coming. With, we got some more coming. Yes, sir. Thank, thank y'all for, for all y'all support. We appreciate it. Yes, sir.